Welcome to Infection and Immunity Evidence Explained, a Doherty Institute podcast. I'm Rebecca Elliott. Legionnaire's disease made headlines in Australia at the start of the year due to an outbreak of the lung infection in Sydney city centre. Fundamental to effective Legionnaire's disease outbreak control is the ability to rapidly identify the environmental sources of the causative bacteria Legionella nemophilia. My guest on the podcast today is Dr. Andrew Bulgens, who is the lead author of a transformative study that describes harnessing the power of machine learning to accurately pinpoint the origins of the bacteria. Andrew is a postdoctoral researcher at the Doherty Institute, conducting pioneering work at the intersection of microbiology and data science, with a focus on leveraging machine learning for public health advancements. Andrew, thanks so much for joining me on Infection and Immunity Evidence Explained. Thanks for having me. So firstly, what is Legionnaire's disease and how is it transmitted? So Legionnaire's disease is a severe form of pneumonia or an infection of the lung caused by uh, a bacterium known as Legionella pneumophila. And these bacteria, they thrive in warm water environments and they can be found in a a variety of man-made water systems such as air conditioning, cooling towers, hot tubs, showers, taps and, and large plumbing systems. And we know that infection occurs when a person inhales aerosolized water droplets containing the bacterium. And it's important to note that this disease is not communicable between people, but it's transmitted through the inhalation of contaminated water mist. And and this disease can manifest with symptoms similar to other forms of pneumonia, which may include cough, shortness of breath, high fever, muscle aches and headaches. And Legionnaire's disease can be particularly severe and require treatment with antibiotics. And we know that there are certain risk factors that can predispose you to severe disease, such as old age and smoking. So given the nature of its transmission, outbreaks of Legionnaire's disease, they're often associated with buildings that have complex water systems, especially when these water systems are not properly maintained. And this is why identifying the environmental sources of Legionella pneumophila during outbreaks is critical for public health interventions to prevent further transmission of the disease. And and just a quick little side note, um, we actually, um, the the largest outbreak of Legionnaire's disease in the Southern Hemisphere to date occurred in Melbourne, at the Melbourne Aquarium, during its first week of opening in the year 2000. Um, In that outbreak, there were 125 confirmed cases and unfortunately four deaths. And, and I remember this as a primary school student really wanting to attend the opening of the Melbourne Aquarium. I didn't end up going, but I'm actually quite fortunate given what happened. Yeah, absolutely. So you touched on before this is treated by antibiotics. What type of antibiotics uh, do we use? So the common antibiotics used to treat Legionnaire's disease include macrolides, fluoroquinolones and tetracyclines. And the key thing here is that um, it's prompt diagnosis and, and early um, early courses of antibiotics that um, give the best outcomes. How are Legionnaires' disease outbreaks currently detected? So the outbreaks, they're currently detected through an interplay of what you might call epidemiological detective work by public health officials, um, as well as laboratory bacterial genotyping approaches and also environmental sampling. So public health departments, they engage in monitoring of reported Legionnaire's disease cases and what they're looking for are patterns and clusters that could signal the emergence of outbreaks and this sort of surveillance is is quite critical as it helps to identify deviations from normal or what we call sporadic baseline levels of cases from those that warrant further investigation and I mentioned environmental sampling and that becomes quite a focal point once an outbreak is suspected or confirmed and, and That means that public health officials can then target potential Legionella breeding grounds to collect samples. And what's then used is genotyping technologies to try and tease apart differences between the strains that we find in the environment and the strains that we've recovered from from patients with Legionnaire's disease. And that sort of matching is used to really pinpoint the outbreak's origins. With these genotyping methods, they've really been key for investigating outbreaks of bacterial pathogens because they offered a means of fingerprint-like genetic matching. However, these conventional genotyping methods ultimately have fallen down when applied to Legionella. Can you explain what uh, genotyping actually is? Sure. So this is a way of interrogating the genome or the genetic makeup of the bacteria to try and tease apart differences to discern between 
um, bacteria that essentially look the same in the lab. And there are technologies um, historically that um, would look at small parts of the genome and, and they worked okay for some bacterial pathogens. But for Legionella, we've come to realise that their genomes are remarkably conserved across um, different locations in some instances. And these older genotyping technologies really quite often don't give us the answers we need because they're only looking at a very abbreviated part of the bacterial genome. They're only looking at a fraction of the evidence that actually is there. So they often miss the variation um, that would allow you to find the smoking gun. They simply haven't got that sensitivity. And in response to this, there's been efforts recently in this space by laboratories using more modern phylogenomic tree analyses, which are basically very high-resolution relationship diagrams, and they're used to better resolve the small differences between closely related strains of Legionella. So the idea here is that this higher-resolution approach can then aid in the precise identification of the outbreak origins. So what are the challenges with the current outbreak detection methods? So one of the primary hurdles is just the sheer complexity involved in environmental sampling as the task of pinpointing the exact locations for sampling is made difficult due to the vast number of potential reservoirs for Legionella, particularly in highly densely urban settings. And this complexity can result in potentially missed sources of if the sampling strategy isn't sufficiently comprehensive or well targeted. And, and another major challenge lies in limitations of the phylogenomic tree analyses in that they consider variation in a lot of the genome, but not all of it. So they are leaving some genomic variation untapped. And these analyses also require a high level of interpretation, which can be quite daunting and requires a significant level of expertise that may not be universally available across all public health settings, potentially limiting the utility of this approach in some outbreak situations. So what's what was really needed here is a space in this space was a way to use all of the available variation in the bacterial genomes and, and to couple that with advanced patent analysis techniques to, to ultimately squeeze the genomic lemon, if you like, to further accurately uncover the, the origins of outbreaks. So your recently published study in the American Society for Microbiology's journal Applied and Environmental Microbiology describes using AI or machine learning to identify the source of Legionnaire's disease outbreaks. Tell me about what you did. So in our recent study, we harnessed the power of machine learning um, basically to enhance the tracing of Legionnaire's disease outbreaks back to their sources. So we embarked on this innovative project by first gathering genomic data from over 500 samples of this bacterium from both environmental sources like water systems and also clinical cases from individuals affected by Legionnaire's disease. And this diverse genomic repository was actually quite critical for analysis as it provided a broad spectrum of data for the machine learning models to learn from. And at the core of our approach here, it involved the training of these computer models to discern patterns and variations within the bacterial genomes. So essentially, we were teaching the computer to determine the origins of Legionella samples based on their genomic variation and where we know the bacteria came from, such as specific air conditioning systems. And to ensure the reliability of our approach, we put the computer models through a series of tests that evaluated the predictive capacity on completely unseen data. Wow. So how does your method improve upon traditional methods that you explained earlier for identifying the environmental sources? So one of the key advantages of our method is its ability to analyse the entire genomic makeup of the bacteria rather than focusing on a limited set of genetic markers, as many conventional methods do. So this com comprehensive analysis allows us to capture a wider array of variation between closely related strains, and such precision is critical for accurately pinpointing the sources of these outbreaks. And to, to show the performance of our method against conventional methods, we retrospectively investigated several outbreaks from different places around the world to identify the origins of Legionella bacteria. And we found that our models outperformed the traditional approaches in matching the bacteria samples to the correct sources. So 
this capability marks a significant advancement in our ability to pinpoint the sources of outbreaks rapidly and accurately. And these advancements are key to preventing further infections and ultimately saving lives. And and just lastly, uh, another powerful feature of our machine learning approach is its capacity to evolve and improve as it processes more data. So by continually incorporating more genomic information from different outbreaks, our models have the ability to become increasingly refined and more precise over time. And this learning aspect reduces the likelihood of false alarms, which are a common issue with the traditional methods. I do want to touch on that. Your research mentions that you have a high predictive sensitivity and specificity without false positives or false negatives in many cases. What does this mean and why is it significant? So high predictive sensitivity or, or the lack of false negatives means that our model was equipped to correctly identify true positive cases where it accurately determines that a sample of Legionella originated from a specific source. And this capability is critical for ensuring that genuine cases are recognised accurately. And, and on the other hand, predictive specificity or the lack of false positives relates to the correct identification of true negatives where our system can precisely discern when a Legionella sample does not originate from a particular source. And, and this high level of specificity is vital for preventing the misidentification of a source as being responsible for an outbreak, thereby avoiding unnecessary and potentially costly interventions. So overall, this high sensitivity and specificity of our approach is quite significant and it instills public health officials with a high degree of confidence in the results. And, and that fosters trustworthiness that is essential to making well-informed decisions in an outbreak response. It's really fascinating work. Congratulations. Um, could you perhaps share an example or a scenario where your approach has been or could be applied in a real-world public health response to an outbreak? Absolutely. So let's imagine that there's an outbreak of Legionnaire's disease in a large metropolitan area with multiple potential sources of the bacteria, such as cooling towers for air conditioning systems, hotel water systems, and things like drinking fountains. And the public health officials are under pressure to quickly identify the sources of the outbreak to prevent further cases. So what we're doing in this situation is we'd start by sequencing the genomes of the bacteria recovered from patients and our models that are already pre-trained on a vast database of Legionella genomes from previous outbreaks and, and environmental sources would then be used to analyse the genomic data from the new clinical samples. So, so here we'd be comparing the genomic sequences of the clinical isolates from the patients to those from environmental samples. And the models would then predict the most likely origins of the outbreak with, with high accuracy. So for instance, let's say that the model identifies a particular air conditioning unit as the source of the outbreak with high confidence. And then based on that genomic match, the public health officials could act swiftly to remediate the identified source, such as disinfecting the cooling tower and implementing measures to prevent further exposure. And just lastly, I'll state that this is not all theoretical. As in our study, we actually used our machine learning approach to retrospectively assign clinical specimens to specific environmental sources for several well reported Legionnaires disease outbreaks around the world with high accuracy. And this also included the very notorious Melbourne Aquarium outbreak back in the year 2000. So how do you see your work influencing the future of disease outbreak control and prevention, especially with regards to using technology like this? So our novel approach, it brings about an un unprecedented level of precision to public health responses. So by accurately identifying the sources of outbreaks, our method encourages the application of targeted interventions, and this precision reduces the reliance on broader measures that may not be as effective and can consume considerable resources. Also, the, the integration of AI into public health strategies, it, it fosters a, a data-driven approach to decision-making in that AI's ability to sift through and analyse complex data sets can reveal insights that traditional methods may overlook, essentially leading to more informed and effective public health policies. Can you talk about the importance of interdisciplinary collaboration in tackling complex health issues like Legionnaire's disease? 
addressing Legionnaire's disease necessitates an interdisciplinary approach as these challenges often encompass various domains of expertise. So with our project, it really intersected the realms of um, many different disciplines like microbiology, data science, genomics, epidemiology, and public health. And it exemplifies the synergy achieved when diverse scientific disciplines converge to forge effective solutions. So the essence of, of, of this collaborative effort really lies in the fusion of unique perspectives that each field um, has brought to this um, work. So, for instance, the microbiologists, they brought insights into the behaviour and, and characteristics of the bacteria. Um, the epidemiologists, they provided expertise in tracking and analysing disease patterns. And the data scientists excelled in managing and deciphering vast data sets. And, and the public health experts, they were adept at devising and implementing control measures. So this confluence of knowledge fosters a holistic understanding of the issue at hand. And it's this sort of collaborative and innovative approach that really enriches the work we do in such a diverse research institute such as the Doherty. And it's certainly one of the key values for me working there. So could machine learning ever replace any of those disciplines or is it just really about bolstering the response? I think it's about, yeah, augmenting the response. I don't think it's ever going to replace the role of epidemiologists. It's more assisting their capacity to make accurate predictions of, of outbreak origins and speeding up their workflow, essentially. And what are the next steps for your research? So building on the success of, of this work, we are planning to expand the application of our machine learning approach while also continuing to refine and develop the technology further. So our aim here is to continue to collaborate with the Department of Health and the Doherty Public Health Labs to prospectively deploy our approach in, in real-world outbreak investigations. And this will offer valuable insights into how our method can be integrated into current public health workflows and, and also give us an opportunity to identify any potential challenges that may need to be addressed for implementation. And in terms of refining the technology, we intend to enhance the accuracy and efficiency of our machine learning models by incorporating more diverse data sets and also to explore the possibility of combining the genomic analysis with real-time environmental monitoring. And it's this integration that could facilitate a more proactive approach to identifying potential outbreak sources based on the diversity that exists in the environment. So essentially, models trained on more comprehensive data will provide the best performance to accurately detect um, outbreaks and reduce the disease burden. Well, Andrew, congratulations on this work. It's so great to see this machine learning technology being used for public health strategies. Thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And thanks to all of you for listening to Infection and Immunity Evidence Explained, Doherty Institute podcast. If there is a specific topic you would like us to cover, please get in touch with us by emailing doherty-media at unimelb.edu.au. That's doherty-media at unimelb.edu.au. If you've enjoyed our podcast, please rate and review on your favourite podcasting app and subscribe if you haven't already. The Doherty Institute is a joint venture between the University of Melbourne and the Royal Melbourne Hospital. See you next time.